Who likes to keep a comedy show moving? Yeah. I'm going to take by your applause that, that you do like that. <laughs> and I'd like to welcome to the stage another comedian. Tim Wood! Hello, I'm Tim Wood. He was talking about a love connection between me and Ray Bullock. <laughs> we live in Richmond. So it's you'll hear a rape whistle blowing you know, once we leave. Not a rape whistle, actually. No, but anyway, I want to try something. I tried this once before, and it went okay. But I want to try it again. So, um, does everybody? Does anybody remember like Pee Wee's Playhouse? How they had like a secret message? Yeah. During the show. Yeah. Well, I want like a like a secret word during my show. So I'm just gonna ask somebody, just anybody in the front row, like. Just one word that you think I can. Just one word. If, if you stay silent, then everybody will be screaming the entire time. <laughs> I know how this joke is. Use some sassafras. Sassafras. I apologize, you will not be screaming tonight. <laughs> sassafras is not a common word that I use. <laughs> Fail again. <laughs> but anyway. I got some jokes. Uh, I don't go to strip clubs, if you were wondering. I'm allergic to cinnamon, and the sugar there gives you herpes. So, plus the hat factory on Techno Night is way cheaper. Like, this is all you need to do. Just walk through the door, find somebody on ecstasy. <laughs> It's like I go there so much. They're like, hey, the beard guy. <laughs> it's awesome. So, uh, but I have a girlfriend, so I don't need to go to strip clubs anyway. And uh, I think it's weird because uh, we never get sick at the same time. It's always like I'm sick for like a week and then like she's sick for a while. I think it's because we don't share needles. <laughs> like, that could be it. I'm talking about macrame, I'm not talking about anything else. So, she says my name in public, like my whole name, and that drives me crazy. And she doesn't understand why. Like we'll be in Kohl's, and, and like I do stupid shit sometimes. So like I'll knock some shoes over her, she'll be like, Timothy David Wood, Junior! Fucking god damn it. You could just tell me, like, hey, what's up? You know? But it's now, it's like, I get home, and there's a message. Yeah, um, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, we were in Kohl's today, and you knocked over those shoes, and your girlfriend, she said your whole name, and we just wanted to let you know that, yeah, that was pretty stupid. You knocked over those shoes. Because they said my whole name, they could just look me up in the phone book and find me. And I get on Facebook and they're like, you're an asshole in Kohl's. So they can find me on there too. That would go a lot better, but I don't care. I, I get angry in traffic a lot. Like, uh, has, has anybody seen the, the project, like Project Strike Force? And they have the commercials for it, and it's a guy, and he's in his car, and it's like filled up to here with like beer, and then there's another guy, and it's like filled. And then the, the officer has the audacity to ask them if they've been drinking tonight. <laughs> like, what are you going to say? Actually, officer, all this was inside me. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> another thing uh, I noticed about like people who are driving, or the, the minivans with the kids, and it's like a mom and a dad, it's like stickers on the back, it's like a bunch of kids. Like, what are you trying to advertise there? Are you, like, are you seriously advertising that you have kids? 
I think it's I think it's what it is. It's like a lighthouse for pedophiles. They're trying. To, it's just like, we got a teenager. <laughs> like, because if I were a pedophile and I were driving behind you, regardless of what I was doing that day, and it's like I gotta get groceries, milk. Holy smoke! Look at those sexy stick figure kids. <laughs> <laughs> and you can always tell the pedophiles from the people who actually had the stickers, like actually have kids, because the pedophiles put them on the side of their car with like X's thrown. <laughs> I don't have kids, so it's just a guy on the back. <laughs> Uh, does anybody here know the speed limit on Broad Street? That's right, nobody fucking knows. <laughs> nobody knows. I was driving down Broad Street the other night, and uh, I was going like 40, 45, and uh, this guy was like right in my ass. When we got to the light, he pulled beside me and he said, if you're going to drive that slow, get in the right, get all the way in the other lane. And I was like, oh my god, he's really mad about how slow I was driving. But then, like, a week later, it slowly wore on my conscience. Like, I was like, maybe I should drive a little bit faster on Broad Street. So I was driving 20 miles faster. I was going, I think, 50, 55. Woohoo! Cops all on Broad Street pulled me over. Project Star Strike Force. He pulls me over, and I'm like, shh. He comes in my window, he's like, you know why I pulled you over? I was like, because I was speeding. He said, no, you're going to drive in that lane, you need to get all the way on the other side, asshole. <laughs> then he just left. <laughs> anyway, watch a lot of TV. Um, there's a commercial for pregnancy tests that are digital. It's called Clear Blue. Like, I don't know if you've seen that, but it's like digital. Like, what's the difference if it's in digital or if it's the other way? It's like, read the back of the box, you're lazy. And how hard is that anyway? Like, how hard is reading, all right, plus means you're pregnant, negative means you're not pregnant. Which I think they should reverse that. Because if I found out my girlfriend was pregnant, I'd react negatively. Anyway, if, if they want to make it clear, like absolutely clear, that you're pregnant. It should say, oh shit! <laughs> because that's what you're gonna say when you get pregnant. And if you're not, it'll say, next time. <laughs> so that's my time. Thank you, I'm Tim Wood. Give a round of applause to everybody. Tim. Two, one! Are you all doing well? Yes! Alcohol! You all ready for your next comedian? Yes! yes. Then put your hands together for Steve O. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, before I get into my jokes, I, I'd like to send, send a special uh, bit of love to, to my mother right there. Yeah. Um, it's her fault for everything. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's nice. She moved me out of Boston. I was born in Boston, and, uh, well, thank God she got me out of there, for one. And she moved me to New Hampshire, which was cool, but um, I was lonely. Black. So uh, it was like it was like this was a thing where bake sales are awesome. Oh no, everybody's touching my goddamn hair. Stop. <laughs> Seriously, and like you know, like my high school people were like trying to bond with me, like over rap. And New Hampshire, 
a lot of shitty tastes and rap. Uh, because, um, who here likes ICP? Exactly. <laughs> There's this guy, his name is uh, Twisted Shit Sucker, and uh, all his albums are about vomit. So we should hang out sometime and smoke weed. Because <laughs> that's what you do. And uh, it's kind of awful. I mean, granted, I do like rap. But, you know, and what I like about rap is just that you can say crazy outlandish shit, and as long as you really mean it, People will buy into it. Like, yeah, like everybody's like, you know, this rapper is like, oh, I'm the best rapper alive. I'm the king of the south. Uh, LL Cool J tried to say he's the greatest of all time at one point. And uh, I'm just like, but me, I'm a regular dude. What do I have to brag about? Like, for real? For real, son? Straight up, nobody tips better than Diddy for me, dog. It's 25%. <laughs> Bow! <laughs> oh, you going on a road trip, son? Straight up. No, I'll read the directions. I'll read them. Yeah, Matt Quest, college boy. I do this. Uh, so, yeah, it's just fucking crazy because rappers, rappers are just characters, people. Uh, a lot of people take rap too serious, take music too serious, and take rap way too serious. Like, they're just characters. Nobody's shooting anybody. Nobody's killing nobody. It's like, are you gonna get mad if the Pep Boys were, like, beefing with the Michelin Man? <laughs> and we're like, a straight up, fuck the Michelin Man. No, no, that doesn't make any goddamn sense. <laughs> like, well, I mean, fuck the Michelin Man, actually. It reminds me, because, like, that's the line, actually, I used to break up with fat girls. <laughs> Take your damn posters and get the fuck out. <laughs> I'm gone off that way. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, the whole world is full of characters. Like, uh, oh, hey, uh, Johnny K plus H, right? Those guys, you guys know them. Their characters are, uh, demon spawns. <laughs> Honestly. And, uh, really. I want to get rich enough so that I can make my own reality show. And uh, it'll be called Henry and Carolyn Have Disfiguring Face Tumors. <laughs> uh, it starts off slow. By the end of the first season, it grows on you. Uh, and, um, you know, that's the kind of shit that entertains me face tumors. Also, also, steel drums. You guys know steel drums, right? Go, 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 go. It's pretty much the soundtrack to Be There Birdies 1 and 2, alright? And uh, you really can't, like, nothing can be that bad as long as they're steel drums. <laughs> you could be like, oh no, I want the keys in my car. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Guess I got a day off from work. <laughs> I'm sorry, I burnt dinner tonight. Go, 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 go. Well, we do have those gift cards to Red Lobster. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you can still drums can solve anything. You're like, uh, excuse me, I'm looking for a Mr. Robinson. Uh, please come with me. Seems that we've uh, found your wife that was missing. Uh, she was, uh, she's at the hospital now. She was raped, and, uh, well, it seems like her attacker had some sort of sexually transmitted cancer, so, um, it's, it's gonna be rough. Uh, I'll find the strength, you know? This will bring us together. This will bring us together. We'll grow from this. Cancer. I know what the kids want. 
I'll be on NBC in like three months. I'll show you this how it works. Um, <laughs> like, but you have to be like pretty strong to, to do that, because like, to like, you know, recover from that. Like the only guy who I think could recover from that is like, uh, one, like Barack Obama. That guy, he cool as a fan. You know what the problem is? This country wasn't in shitty enough condition when he took it. Because then you really love him. Like, if this was like post nuclear holocaust, <laughs> and Barack Obama was just like, uh, thank you, fellow survivors of the uh, nuclear holocaust, <laughs> for showing up on what used to be the Washington Monument. We're uh, no longer a country divided by red and blue states. I believe we're a country ran by tribal factions. <laughs> fighting over what precious little resources we have. Such as oil, water, electricity, fertile women. <laughs> Uh, just to let you know, there have been some changes in the cabinet. Uh, as you know, Gulag, the appointed secretary of leather, <laughs> was mauled by several wild dogs. <laughs> we are currently looking for a replacement. Uh, but as always, Master Blaster will run Barter Town. <laughs> <laughs> like, that dude just has a way to talk to you and you're just cool. You know who doesn't? Thugs. Thugs don't know how to tell shit about shit. Because, if you ever heard, like, a thug talk about wanting to fight somebody, you would swear they were about to go have sex with them. Because <laughs> they're just like, yo, straight up, Troy, you know Troy, right, dog? Troy owes me money from like three weeks ago, son. And if I see this dude, if I see him, he's getting touched. <laughs> he's getting touched, I'm giving him the business. I'm saying, <laughs> his dick's gonna be in the dirt. What do you think? Like, would you, don't describe how you're gonna hurt somebody by the game. That's, that's misleading. <laughs> you catch up with them a couple days later, though, and you find out how that shit resolves itself. And they're like, you know, all right, so I saw him, right? I saw him, you know what I'm saying? Straight up, I put hands on him. <laughs> I put hands on him. They tried to, he tried to jump me. I had to beat them all off. <laughs> so, had to grab my tool, spray on <laughs> Hey, uh, that's my time, everybody. Yeah! Yeah! Steve House! Yeah! And his mom! Yeah! Funny or not funny, let's rate them.
Anyway, Kansas Coliseum, the great thing about that is it's got a very large parking lot. And the second coolest thing about that is that in two weeks, uh, the ghetto fair is coming to the Hampton Coliseum parking lot. It's fucking awesome. It's like crackhead security guards riding Segways, trying to sell you counterfeit jeans and shit. There's like a homeless dude in clown makeup yelling racial slurs from the dump tank. They got this like three-legged giraffe. And he's like so cute because he keeps like lowering his head but like falling over. Because <laughs> of all the people throwing food at his feet. <laughs> it's the best 50 cents I ever spent. <laughs> the ghetto fair is awesome. Like the best advice I ever got was from a one-eyed guy working the ring toss at the ghetto fair. And he told me, he was like, look man, if you see a bear holding a heart in a store, give it to your girlfriend. But if you see a bear holding a heart out in the woods, <laughs> go ahead and give your girlfriend to it. <laughs> and I was like, man, that is, that is deep. Like, is that how you lost your eye? And he was like, no. Nah. <laughs> Seriously, y'all should make the trip to the ghetto fair. Yeah, totally this is going awesome, man. The, a couple shows ago, uh, I did a show for like three people, uh, two of which were making out in the back. <laughs> and the other one, if you're counting, was this giant, drunk, scary Eskimo lady <laughs> sitting at the bar that had like a weird blurry tattoo. You couldn't tell what it was on her back. I don't know if that was like age or so you might, but... <laughs> She was okay, like she would laugh obnoxiously, like at every joke, but then directly afterwards would tell you why she laughed at every joke. <laughs> She'd be like, oh my god, that was fucking hilarious because she talked about that black guy. <laughs> and I was like, uh, I was talking about texting. <laughs> Eskimo lady. Congratulations. I don't know if it's just me or not. I'm figuring it's just me. But uh, every time uh, a black comedic actor uh, dresses in drag, I'm pretty turned on. <laughs> like every time I can think of that a black comedic actor dresses up like a woman, like I think they're pretty sexy, like uh, that dude that plays Queen Latifah. <laughs> that dude is hot. I would totally stick it in his or her ear. <laughs> Did y'all know that when you are born with like the branch and the bush? You know what I'm saying? Like the gun and the holster? A hermaphrodite? Is that what they call it? Did they leave the decision, like, they leave the decision up to the parents at that point, you know, like whether to sniff or plug or whatever they do. They leave it up to the parents, and I'm like, what, what kind of decision is that? It's like, okay, do we want a male hairdresser or a female cop? <laughs> I guess they both pay pretty well, I don't know. I haven't been either, luckily. Um, I don't know if y'all heard about this, but evidently uh, Paris Hilton was uh, busted in Las Vegas with cocaine in her purse. Woo! And I was like... Why didn't she keep that, you know, in her snatch? Because it totally would have fit. You know what I'm saying? She probably could have still kept it in her purse. You know? Like, why did she not put the cocaine in her snatch? And then I was like, you know what? Not everybody's going to be looking in her purse. <laughs> I'm 
glad y'all didn't ground when they ground last time. That's <laughs> pretty cool. Um, I was a big fan of the uh, the female hip hop group Salt and Pepper growing up. Um, and I didn't understand for the longest time like which one was salt. <laughs> and then I asked somebody about that and they were like, well, the, the light-skinned girl was salt. And I'm like, that's more like cumin and pepper. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's more like cinnamon and pepper. <laughs> I'm not very uh, proud of my past. Uh, I used to beat people up for their lunch money uh, until like, I got caught a couple weeks ago. Now they won't let me in dress codes anymore. <laughs> okay, um, let's get serious for a second. Uh, say you have sex with a werewolf. While still in human form, is that bestiality? No. No, no. good, because I just wanted to make sure I haven't committed a crime or anything. <laughs> I'm already on parole, and I don't even get that charge. Like, isn't necrophilia really a victimless crime? The people are like, you know, he's really only hurting himself, but it feels good to me, so. <laughs> uh, I like big girls too, not just dead girls. I'm a big fan of big girls because uh, most of my uh, dating is done online. And uh, that just makes it really easy. Like all you gotta do is find the girl with like only the headshot from high school. <laughs> Or like, you know, a random picture of a fairy. <laughs> Off the Golden Corral we go, you know what I'm saying? In the story. I uh, was in the checkouts at Walmart, which is my least favorite place to go. Even though that's where I do all my grocery shopping. But I was in line uh, trying to ignore the stupid people around me. And I saw this magazine, and on the cover was a lady with like a big shit-eating grin, you know? And the story underneath the lady was, uh, how I blew $11 million. And I'm like, that doesn't sound interesting at all. Like if the article was who you need to blow for $11 million, <laughs> like I'd probably become a reader at that point. <laughs> because I will totally blow somebody for $11 million. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like the task, the task itself is going to be grueling, but like how satisfying is it going to be when you stand up afterwards and you're like, that'll be $11 million. <laughs> I really appreciate everybody's time and attention. Yeah. Yeah. James Paul! Ago, I was in North Carolina doing comedy, and I was performing and doing comedy, and then the next comedian who's also performing, he's coming up now, was doing comedy as well, and he followed me, and I left on the microphone one of my beard hairs. <laughs> And he said that now it's like, now I know what it's like to kiss this guy. I could have told the story better, but I'm not going to tell his story. So please welcome Travis Charles. All right. Got some new shit. How you guys doing, Dion? Good. Alright, I was at a funeral the other day. This is true. And uh, I noticed at this funeral there was a lot of old people there and they were crying. So I went up to one of them that I knew did not, didn't really know the guy who died. I said, why are you crying? She goes, because I'm just praying that I'm not next. Bam! One of them. <laughs> I went to the 
this Japanese restaurant the other day, me and my wife, and um, it's like, what's it called? Uh, whatever. Um, we were eating, and I ordered ice cream. It was called uh, Mishu or Mushi ice cream. And when I ate it, it was really good. I was like, so I asked the woman, I said, what, what is in this? What is this made of? She said, oh, it's a mushy. I don't know what the fuck it's called, what, what is in it? Uh, mushy. What is it made of? Like, what is on the outside of it? Oh, it's a Japanese. Oh, God, God, thank God I'm not allergic to Japanese. Because it's fucking awesome. <laughs> I, uh, you know what, I think you can pick up women, guys, you can pick up women by having the appearance of money. Like if you dress sharp and have like jewelry and shit, you can pick up women. But um, at least make your lies somewhat believable when you're telling them the shit you own. You know, because when she gets to your house, she goes, um, I thought you had a boat. Uh, I do. But my son plays with it in the bathtub. <laughs> I'm not a liar. I also have a Corvette. He drives it around the backyard. Um, but also, you know, if you're a guy and you're riding around with your friends and you are, uh, you're in the passenger seat, do not try to hit on girls on the side of the road. They don't like this. They don't think it's awesome for you to go, hey, ladies, guess what? I called shotgun first. That's right. That's right. Can I get those digits? No. <laughs> I think a good, uh, a good uh, defense mechanism, if you're a guy and you get into a fight, and a bunch of guys start kicking your ass and they're really beating the shit out of you, I think the best way to stop that fight immediately is to lay on the ground and go, I'm coming! I'm coming! Oh, God! Kick me harder! I'm about to come! Hit me! Man, what the fuck you fucking I'm not going to hit you! Just, no straight guy, no straight guy wants to be the fucking reason some other dude had an orgasm. <laughs> Oh yeah, you see this? You see the show Hoarders? Yeah. All right. I see this shit in real life. I work for Comcast. I know people's dirty ass houses. Um, but I think it, you know when you get to the point where your house is so fucking full of shit and so dirty that when a homeless guy says he'll sleep outside, <laughs> clean your fucking living room. It's fucking nasty. I've seen I've seen some nasty shit. You know what I think is funny though? I think it's funny is when you're when you're in public somewhere and, you, and you're walking around and you trip over something, or you you see somebody trip and think no one's looking. Whatever they tripped over, they look at and get pissed off at. <laughs> then you're walking, <laughs> fucking curve. <laughs> I know you've been there for 20 years, but goddamn, my fat feet. <laughs> no, fuck, whatever. This is just, just new. It's not in joke for me. I just wrote it all down. And it's in my phone. All right, let's see. Then that. Oh, I, uh, this is actually true, good news. Uh, I just found out uh, two weeks ago that my wife is pregnant, expecting her first year. Yeah. But I realized her, her, <laughs> her being pregnant, is uh, it gives me the ability to where I can never come home and complain ever again. Like, I can go to work all day, come home, oh my god, I had a hard day at work, my back is fucking killing me. Oh, shut the fuck up, you don't have a person growing inside of your stomach. <laughs> Okay, I'll move on from that one. <laughs> you know what? People say stereotyping is bad. You shouldn't stereotype. You know, I actually think stereotyping is, is a good thing. I love to stereotype people. Like, for instance, I look over here, and about 80% of people have a shitty stigmatism. Because they all have glasses. Okay? Really? <laughs> it's not fucking a fashion statement. <laughs> Thanks, Corey. <laughs> you can pick out laughs and know your friends are the ones laughing. <laughs> what else did I do? Hold on. I'm almost done. Let's try an old joke. Has anyone here seen me before? Yeah. Okay, if you go. Know. You saw me. Who said that? Me. The bartender. <laughs> All right. Um, doing comedy is fun, though. I, I do a lot of comedy. I travel around a lot. Um, I think it's fun when you do comedy because one of the good parts about doing this is, is meeting celebrities. Um, but I think it's weird when you meet a celebrity and you introduce yourself to them. They feel the need to tell you their name in return like you don't know who they are. It's like, oh, hey, man, my name's Travis Charles. Uh, hey, I'm Tom Cruise. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> I've seen you in your underwear, man. Come on. Or better yet, hey, man, my name's Travis Charles. Uh, hey, I'm Hulk Hogan. 
<laughs> really? I used to play with you in the bathtub. <laughs> I do this creepy little thing where I spread your legs over my penis and you only have a giant cock. About how hard you laughed at I know you fucking love it too. Oh yeah. Use G.I. Joe's, it looks bigger. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna get out of here in a second. Uh, I, started, I started a day job, like I said, I work here in Richmond, I work for Comcast Cable. And um, hey, don't cheer that shit. Uh, <laughs> But I'll tell you this though, if you don't laugh, I'm gonna find out where you live and disconnect that shit. <laughs> like, eh, don't worry. <laughs> um, but doing this job, I get to meet a lot of crazy people, see a lot of weird shit. My favorite thing I ran into the other day was I walked into a house, knocked on the door. When I did, a little kid ran out, tugged on my pants, and goes, Hey! My mommy sucks dick for coke. <laughs> <laughs> How much coke? <laughs> Give it up for Travis Charles and iPhone technology!